Hey everybody, welcome to a very introductory lesson to the acoustic lap steel. Um, in this lesson, we'll discuss three different options of instrument, depending on uh, what you have available to you for this, as well as uh, some slides and basic beginner technique to get started. So stay tuned, buckle in, We'll have a good time here with this one. Okay, so one of my favorite instruments in the entire world is the Weizenborn guitar. Just a beautiful, beautiful sounding instrument. Um, uh, traditional, original Weizenborns are pretty hard to come by. They're pretty expensive these days. Uh, I have a gold tone Weizenborn. This is a very nice instrument uh, in its price range. Not exceptionally cheap. I think these things are around $1,000, but they are a, a, a nice instrument. So if you have one of these available already, chances are you already know how to play the acoustic uh, lap steel. However, for those that are interested, this is a very decent instrument in its price range. Okay, another option for acoustic lap steel, uh, and these uh, instruments are a little more available. They're getting a little more difficult to find, but they're, it's not impossible to find them, and they're reasonably priced. This particular instrument here is a 1934 Oahu student model square neck, and it's got a pretty nice tone. Not quite as rich as a Weizenborn and as full, but it still has a pretty cool little tone, tonal quality to it. Uh, neck is a little bit shorter, uh, fun to play. With the square neck model, um, you do get a little bit more resonance from the guitar, but the trade-off is, is with the Weizenborn, it has a hollow neck, so you get the big, rich, full tone. These ones, not so much. Most of the sound is coming from the body, but still a pretty unique sound. Okay, so if those first two instruments are beyond your capability to obtain or a little uh, higher in price than you want to go, if you have an old guitar laying around, it's very, very easy to turn that into an acoustic lap steel. And a lot of those guitars actually have another cool sound of its own. Now, for instance, I don't even know what this guitar is. It, there's no name on it, it's been around forever, but it sounds like this. And for today's lesson, we will use this guitar as I expect that uh, most of you may go with this route until you decide you really want to get deep into the lap steel guitar. Okay, so you'll notice that on this guitar, th this is just a regular round neck, uh, small body guitar. You can do this with any size guitar, but this is a small body student model guitar, a parlor guitar, if you will, uh, and probably uh, my favorite type of acoustic guitar. I just love those old parlor guitars. They, they have a certain sound to them. So you'll notice that I have a raised nut on this. Um, and this nut looks like this. These are easily, uh, easily obtainable uh, from most guitar shops. Um, I'll show it to you here in the camera. Basically, it's a raised nut and it just sits over top of the original nut that's already there. I'm hoping this is in focus for you. You know, I'm doing these, these videos here uh, on the amateur side, but it's essentially just a raised nut. They're not expensive, and they just slip over top of the actual nut that's on the guitar, okay? So this way, you can easily remove it. If you decide that you want to modify your guitar uh, to play acoustic lap steel, it's very simple. You can just throw the nut on there, the string pressures will hold the nut down, and voila, you've got an acoustic lap steel that you're not absolutely married to, nor do you have to alter the guitar in any way 
which may or may not damage it or reduce its value. Um, so for this lesson, this is what we will use. Assuming that most of uh, you guys have access to a, a high nut, they call it, <laughs> we'll go with this for today. Now, there are a number of different types of slide bars that you can use. As a matter of fact, there's endless possibilities, I think. For this lesson, I'm going to give you three options, uh, three easily obtainable options. Uh, the first one, uh, I, I like these uh, Dunlop lapdog slides. Easily had. They have a beveled end on them, which is good for pull-offs. Um, they, uh, they have a nice mass to them. But the advantage of these bars is exactly the pull-offs. With this type of bar, you can go... See the pull off. Okay, so we should take a quick look at how to hold the bar. These bars have a little slot on the top for your first finger to rest in. Then you can take your second finger, you'll see that it has a ridge, a sort of a concave ridge that the second finger fits comfortably into. So you would hold the bar like this, okay? And then your thumb, of course, on the other side. You can see how that is there. So pretty comfortable, very easily, very ergonomically friendly. And this bar, of course, uh, as you've, uh, if you've watched my previous slide lessons, you're gonna wanna damp the strings behind the bar. So doing that, you can use your third finger down on the strings to give it a muted sound so that it, so that it sounds like this behind the bar. Then you don't have that unwanted string noise. Uh, if you need to get more detail of that, you can go back to the previous slide guitar lesson uh, with, my, with my bottleneck series, my, uh, standard, uh, my standard slide guitar series. So... Uh, so just to go over this briefly, uh, the bar fits like this in your hand, all right, with your third finger behind to get rid of all the unwanted noise. So this way, everything sounds clean, execution's good. So that's my preference uh, for a bar. Uh, we'll get into a couple other possible bars depending on your style of play. Another type of bar, and this is a more traditional uh, type of bar that lap steel and pedal steel players tend to use, is the bullet bar. And they call it the bullet bar because you'll see that at the end of the bar, it's a rounded tip. There's some advantages for that. Uh, there's also some disadvantages. I find with these bars, we still try to hold the bar the same way uh, as the other, as the lap dog bar that we were using. Um, and the same principle uh, goes with dampening the strings behind it. You'll find when you use this bar, it's a little more cumbersome. Because you have no ridges to hold the bar ergonomically in place, you're just holding a piece of tubing. The plus side is, is you can actually rest the tip of the bar up against the, uh, the string that you're not using. So for instance, you could go and then just slide that bar forward onto the fifth string and still have it so you don't have to cover all the strings. So you could do uh, such a thing as this. And then finish it by picking the top string, okay? So this is equally as well to use. It really comes uh, down to the style that you'd like to play with. Um, these, these steel uh, polished bars tend to have quite a bit more sustain and a little bit brighter of a tone. The other option is you can 
find these old Bakelite bars, and these are very cool too. Same principle, um, got the bullet end, I hold it the same way, but it's a softer, more mellow tone. So that all comes down uh, to your particular preference. Tone is subjective. Uh, one man's tone is another man's nightmare and vice versa. But uh, that's a third easily obtainable bar that you can use. Now there's lots more out there as we go, but we use these three now to keep things fairly simple. You can uh, use thumb picks and finger picks as you would on a pedal steel or electric lap steel or even on an acoustic guitar. It sort of again depends on what your taste and what your uh, playability, comfortability is. I tend to not use thumb and finger picks on Weizenborn guitars because I really, really do love the sound of the skin to the string. And I tend to do this with all acoustic lap steels. It's a much mellower tone. So you're having the, the skin to the string sound, uh, which is pleasant to me. Maybe not to everybody, but pleasant to me. Having said that, I also use a thumb pick. I tend to use these, uh, these Dunlop that have the little hook in the bottom of them, just because they're more ergonomically comfortable for me. And then I'll use fing finger picks. Also, I find with finger picks if I need to be louder, if I'm in, if I'm in a, with a bunch of different musicians playing in a group acoustically, let's say you've got a banjo there, traditionally loud or more loud acoustic guitar players, I tend to use the finger picks. However, the drawback with the finger picks are is that it's more of a, it's more of a noisy sound. I guess it's not quite as warm and beautiful. It's a little more brash. Is loud. Okay, so you know, do the finger pick thing with a thumb pick if you want, or you can do it without. Either way, it comes down to what your taste is. As in the slide guitar series, we touched in depth on using the spider technique. The spider technique still applies on acoustic lap steel. And when I say spider technique, um, I use my thumb to block the, the bottom three strings that I'm not playing. And then I use my first finger on the third string, second finger, second string, third finger, first string. And the, the principle of this is, is, uh, you want to block out the notes that you're not playing. For instance, I just played those first three strings, so I've got my thumb blocked out on everything else, so you don't, so you don't get the noise in it. Right? So with this, I'll just play the B, the G, and the D string, and everything else is blocked out. You'll see that my thumb's gone down there. I'm still blocking out the first string with my third finger. Okay, it's not an easy technique to learn, but if you go back to the slide guitar video, it's there in great depth, the same principle applies. Um, it doesn't mean you have to do it all the time. There's certain things in slide that maybe you, you want to be a little noisier. You know, if you want to be a little louder. Um, but the spider technique is important on both instruments, uh, including the acoustic lap steel. In my previous videos, we've been doing a jam track with each lesson. For this particular lesson, we're not gonna do the jam track just yet. What I'll do is show you an easy lick to play on acoustic lap steel to get you started, to get you comfortable. And as we move along in the subsequent lessons to come, um, we'll get back to the jam track thing where I'll, I'll give you something you can actually play to uh, while learning this. 
So again, I love open D. I know a lot of these lessons have been in open D. I'm gonna keep this one in open D for now. When we move into the electric lap steel series, I'm gonna change the key. But this is just to get you started. So we're gonna go open D. So your, your low string, uh, the bottom string will be D. The fifth string will be A. Fourth string will be D. Third string will be F sharp. Second string will be A. And then the top and the high string will be D. So it should sound like an open D chord. Okay. okay. So we're going to use the lap dog bar, not a bullet bar, uh, for this particular lick. It's a little bit more precise to do what we're going to do, but this is going to be the lick, essentially. Okay, do it one more time. Now you'll notice I am using a thumb pick for this part of the lesson. I just choose to do it this way. You can do it without the thumb pick. The lick is going to start, going to basically start on the fifth string. And we're going to go, we're going to play it open and then pluck to the second fret with the bar. And again, let's not forget when you're playing slide guitar, the bar goes over top of the fret and not in between the frets. Uh, just a quick reminder, if you're between the frets, you're going to be a little bit flat. You have to be over top of the fret to achieve the proper intonation. You hear the difference there. So, so we're going to start on the fifth string. We're going to pluck it. Add the second fret, fifth string. And then with your second finger pluck the D string which will be your fourth string so okay and then to finish it we're gonna pluck the sixth string with your thumb slide with the slide from the fourth string second fret up to the fourth fret now you'll notice I'm pointing the bar down and in so I'm not these strings are remaining open Don't forget vibrato is key. We've discussed vibrato heavily in the uh, standard slide guitar lessons. The vibrato is your signature. Okay, so play the lick slowly. One more time. And then we'll finish the lick with a sweep all the way to the fifth fret. So you'll start at the fourth fret and you'll go. Okay, so you're just gonna use your thumb to sweep all the way to the fifth fret. So that's a very, very simple lick to get you started. I know some of the advanced players, uh, you'll find this uh, pretty basic. It is basic. Once we get going into things uh, further, once everyone gets comfortable, we'll start looking at bar slants and another, other ways to do the lick. I just want to keep it nice and easy for the beginner players to get them interested and comfortable in doing this. So we'll do the lick one more time. Okay, just a little vibrato. 
All right, I hope I've been able to help you with a very basic introduction to the acoustic lap steel guitar. Stay tuned. We're going to get in depth uh, with this part of the series as we go. Um, one of my favorite uh, instruments to play, and I sure do love the sound of it when other people play it. So I hope you've enjoyed this and stay tuned. We got lots more coming up right here. <laughs>